Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, everyone. Hi, uh, good evening, Lanjana, ma'am. Everyone, can you see us and hear us? Can you all see us and hear us? Uh, if you could just type in a yes, I think I this I just um, wrote yes. Yes. They all right. All right. Thank you us. so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Fantastic. All right. All right. Welcome to uh, the next webinar. Uh, now today's webinar is uh, super interesting. Why? Because um, with whatever is happening around, I think this is one field uh, which is in great demand. And um, if you predict. next few years this will be the uh, set of careers which will boom and people will look at this career uh, in greater detail a lot of students being a counselor and i'm sure swati will agree with me a lot of students have now started asking about careers related to uh, bio biological sciences medicine epidemiology etc etc so hence we thought why not have a public webinar for all of us and understand what this career is all about and to give you the industry perspective we have invited two panelists as well so we have with us uh, two esteemed experts from this field we'll be discussing and asking them questions about how um, these courses are taught in these universities but before we uh, go on to um, what exactly um, these universities actually offer let's understand first of all um, uh, what exactly do we uh, have with respect to pcb so swati uh, So we have with us Swati as well. So Swati with, uh, is a colleague of mine, and we both just... mind law. Yeah. So we both uh, specialize in our different domains. Uh, so Swati, if you could just uh, start the screen share, and then you can start off with uh, helping our students. Right. I'll just start my screen share. One second. Sure, sure. Yeah. Is my screen visible, Vishnuvi? Yes, you can just uh, make it uh, probably the slide share. So all of uh, the students, uh, you will be uh, please uh, keep an eye out for the Pankaj Rehan, Anshita Kapoor, uh, Abhishek Gulati, and Nikita. So all of these people are also from Mindler team. They will be answering your questions, and of course, we will also pick few questions from the uh, chat box and ask the experts. Um, over to you, Swati. Let's start off. So uh, just to give you a background, this is the kind of an image we tried creating. to fit the entire domain of biological sciences what are the different aspects under biological sciences we will cover a bit and of course our experts will also cover a bit so over to you swati right so we would be starting the divided biological sciences in about seven domains that we'll be covering right now so starting with medicine and alternate medicine now medicine and alternate medicine basically comprises of everything from uh, medicine in itself comprises of mbbs bds and veterinary sciences at the same time we have alternate medicine which is all of your ayurveda homeopathy uh, naturopathy all of that is alternate medicine majorly the students looking at this most of them have to take the neat exam and that is the route towards getting into medicine in india uh all the fields that uh, are associated with medicine uh such as allied med uh, such as physiotherapy such as pharmaceuticals for example optometry uh audiology radiology anesthesiology all of these are people who work with doctors clinical psychology also so these are people who work with doctors in a hospital and th this is the field under allied medicine this is uh, another field that a lot of students look at particularly Hello. when they're looking at biological sciences in at the moment yeah uh, uh, just a second uh, can we mute Charat, ourselves if you could just uh, yeah yeah mr charak can you please uh, mute yourself you are audible right now yeah swati you can go ahead right so allied medicine is a major field for anybody who's looking for a uh, particularly fields which are not put, not core medicine or alternate medicine but want to help doctors in any way possible and want to work in the field of healthcare now biotechnology is another area where uh, particularly we are talking about uh, given the covid 19 situation biotechnology has had a major boom 
now biotechnology is related to using combining technology and biology with respect to developing vaccines with respect to producing different type of crops such as you would have heard about bt cotton you would have heard about bt brinjal which are less uh, you know less uh, accessible to rodents and all of that uh with respect to animal biotechnology also we have a number of fields such as we are producing biotechnologically uh, uh changed cows for milk so biotechnology is a major field and given the covid-19 there has been a lot of biotechnological research also happening one particular sub field under biotechnology is nanotechnology now nanotechnology is all about using nanobots and uh, for for a number of purposes this could be to introduce new genes this could also be to introduce uh, particularly uh, you know developing uh, treatments for different diseases we have nanobots now conducting operations uh, with respect to areas which cannot be reached by human uh hands and human equipments managed by humans right so nanotechnology has a major application in the field of medicine as well as well as particularly with respect to farming with respect to uh animal husbandry with respect to every field uh, food sciences also nanotechnology is being used that is uh, uh, something that i wanted to talk about which we over to you to cover the rest right. of the four areas yes. that we have here Yes, yes. So thank you, Swati. So as we discussed, so medicine, alternative medicine was one option. Allied medicine and biotechnology was another. Let's talk about uh, some other field which is relate, which are related to biology. So we have an area called food technology and, and agriculture. Now, uh, what is agriculture? So agriculture is not restricted to only farming. Agriculture is anything to do with animal husbandry, any anything to do with uh, horticulture, um, studying fisheries. uh studying about poultry farming so we have in india if you look at we had we have about 43 universities just offering uh, careers and courses related to agriculture so again a field which uh, pcb students can look at so we have a council which is called icar indian council of agricultural research that's where you enroll and you write the entrance exam for all of these agricultural universities and all of these uh, major food industries food uh, chains actually have a tie up with agricultural industry to come up with these interesting um, um uh, products so for example if you are looking at let's say nowadays mango or watermelon is available throughout the year now how is that possible so this is where agriculture comes in this is where food technology and food science comes in so you, you would have heard about eno being offered in different flavors so we have a cola flavor we have um orange flavor so how is that possible that is basically uh something which is called flavor chemistry and that's again part of food science and food technology um something um to do with organic farming will also come under food uh, technology and food agriculture now uh, moving to the next domain which is pure sciences or pure research now this is an area uh which is for people who are interested in studying about uh, human body that is physiology or maybe animals which is uh, zoology or plants which is botany um or you can look at microbiology studying about microorganisms or something like biochemistry that's a combination of biology and chemistry so what we um end up studying is basically how these chemical compounds react to uh, bodily uh, temperature our cells and that's how our vaccines and our medicines are created so they work closely with all the pharmaceutical industry uh, with cosmetic industry as well so application of this is varied so pure sciences uh, will usually lead you to research and development uh, can help you work in the pharmaceutical industry can help you with the academia as well uh, moving to something like genetics and forensic science now um, a very common example which i use with students um, is basically there is this one show which we all used to watch and we all will be able to re relate to that which is uh, cid and that's where um we have a forensic scientist which is dr salonke so he is the person who will actually uh, be responsible to figure out when did that murder happen how did that happen uh, who all were involved your dna testing your hair testing all of those things so that's a basically a layman explanation of what genetics and forensic science is all about um so genetics and forensic science uh, again is open for students who are from pcb background um very interesting example of genetics is something which is um, similar to what we have as crispr 
now we all watch netflix uh, recently i watched a very interesting documentary um, which is called human nature uh, which talks about crispr as such which is gene editing so all of these uh, diseases which are genetic in nature which cannot be treated by any vaccine uh, uh, which cannot be prevented by any vaccine or cannot be treated by any medicine um the that basically genetic uh, disorder so how do you actually fix that how do you correct um incorrect genes so that's where uh, genetic uh, research or genomics come in uh, so if, when you study genetics you you're studying about genetic engineering how do you alter genes how can you um, make a different color eye uh, for your baby or a different hair color for your baby uh, that's something genetics can do now whether it's legal or not that's a different question altogether but that's something which is possible and which uh, is been happening in india as well as outside india so again genetics is a fantastic field which you can look at if you are interested in uh, studying about dna chromosomes cells etc uh, moving on to our last domain which is environmental science now what is environmental science now uh, with whatever with the covid uh, scene around now we are looking at alternate of all the possible options so for example if you are not going to office we are working alternatively from home uh, if uh, so for us we our bread and butter was basically to go to schools and deliver workshops so that was not happening so our alternate route was basically webinar so even in um, when you look at the general scenario uh, we are constantly striving to find out alternate resources to the existing resources if you're looking at crude oil if you're looking at um anything to do with coal or anything to do with existing um food industry we are coming up with new alternate cheaper ways so uh, environmental science is basically a study uh, which uh, gives you information about physics about chemistry about bio about geography and helps you uh, figure out alternate resources um for the existing resources now there is a one more specialized area which is sustainability so in india you will have degrees which are related to environmental science environmental sustainability or sustainability as such which is basically understanding environment and coming up with new alternate resources now whether you're looking at india or outside sustainability or environmental science again um, is a field where most of the company is um investing on so you they are investing on water resources uh, investing on electricity investing on uh, something like crude oil uh, so that because in future we would need all of these things and we would need researchers or uh, environmentalists who can actually work around these areas so sustainability and environmental science can actually uh, come into picture so to give you a brief idea about all of these courses and how you can pursue them uh coming to medicine and alternate medicine whether you are looking at allopathy or the alternate ayurveda sudhirani siddha bds which is dentistry uh, or veterinary sciences for all of these uh, courses there is one top solution which is your neat exam you you need to write your neat exam whether you want to study in india or you want to study outside india looking at allied medicine now allied medicine whether you are looking at physiotherapy or occupational therapy or something like um, nursing or something like clinical psychology dietitian all of these courses will have their own specific entrance exam um, and the syllabus will be basically your physics chemistry bio of class 11th and 12th all right looking at biotechnology and nanotechnology now as uh, uh, swati mentioned uh, nanotechnology is a specialized field so you start off with something like biotechnology now biotechnology we have two ways of pursuing either you study btech and biotech or you study bsc in biotechnology a lot of institutes um, trust me when i say this btech which is an engineering course um it is also available for students who do not have pcm so pcb students uh, who wish to study biotechnology which is btech and biotech yes you are eligible uh, of course btech and biotech um, is a four year professional course uh, bsc in biotech will be a three year course uh coming to food technology and agriculture most of the institutes offering agriculture will be a four year course and then you move on to do your specialization as well food science on the other hand is a three year course and food technology is usually a four year course pure research uh, if you are looking at uh, places like icer or iisc which are the top institutes of the country uh, offering pure research uh, will expect you to write the entrance exam and uh, do an integrated course which is bs plus ms but other universities which are good enough 
uh, will ask you to uh, either submit your class 12 score yeah. or write an entrance exam, which will will be a three year score. Okay. Uh, Veshmi, I'd like to add here, so you can yes. also take the KV KVPY route if you are willing to enter IISC and yes. uh, ISERs so and looking, ISERs. Excellent. Thank you, Swati, for bringing that up. So, if you're looking at IISC, you can write either write the NEET exam. Also, you can alternatively write the KVPY or submit your class 12 score and write their own entrance exam. Uh, coming to genetics and forensic science, um, now this is a course which is usually available at the master's level. Uh, most good institutes will offer all of these things. I'm talking about India right now. I'm not talking about outside India because we have two experts who will be talking about uh, fantastic courses in their institutes outside India. But in India, you will be um, offered genetics or forensic science at the master's level. Uh, same goes with environmental science as well, though few universities have environmental studies as, as as the undergrad degree but there are a lot of institutes which will offer you at the postgrad level Vaishnavi, somebody uh, yes. has asked about uh, biochemistry and genetics so like Vaishnavi mentioned to you right now these are at the master's level these are specialized a few universities in India would offer these but however you can explore options abroad which our panelists uh, right, right, orient right. you more with Right. Uh, so thank you so much, Swati. And I think this is what we wanted to cover in a very uh, 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 superficial manner with respect to all of these aspects. Of course, you have access to Mindler Career Library and we have career pages and blogs uh, of all of these uh, re um, career domains. So you can reach out um, and read about these career library pages and blogs. Uh, now let's understand how these um, uh, courses are taught in universities and how these courses are basically um, applied in real life uh, by inviting our panelists. So let's invite our first panelist, um, Nalangana ma'am, if you're here. So let me introduce you our, to our first pal panelist. We have with us Ms. Nalangana Sheen, who is a senior recruitment advisor for Trinity College Dublin, the University of Dublin, and is based in New Delhi. Nilanjana is armed with over a decade of experience in the international higher education sector. She spent nine years with London Metropolitan University, Lyson Office India, where she joined as an office manager and worked her way up to the position of regional director, India and Nepal. Thereafter, she worked with Chopra Consultants as DGM Strategic Alliances and Partnerships. She holds a professional diploma in marketing and the Chartered Institute of Marketing UK and a bachelor degree from Delhi University. Over to you, ma'am. I'll just open up your presentation. Uh, I think your uh, video is off as of now. If you could just switch on your video as well. Nilanjana, ma'am, are you here? Uh, that's okay. So, Swati, why don't you introduce uh, the next panelist? Oh, ma'am is here. Ma'am, yes. can you hear us? Okay. Um, I think you are not audible. We can't hear you. you. You're, you're not. But you're not audible. audible. Yeah. I think you're muted. Okay, uh, we'll figure that out. I'll just we, give you a call, ma'am. Till then, uh, Swati, why don't you introduce uh, to our next panelist? Yes. So our next panelist is Mr. Charat Sundar, Sundarajan. He has recruited students from US, Canadian, French, German, and UK universities. Post MBA from the United Kingdom. He comes with over 10 years of experience in various industries, including student counseling and recruitment. Charat is handling student recruitment for St. George's University School of Medicine, Grenada. More than 44 plus years, St. George's University's, uh, University pioneered the concept of international medical education and remains at the forefront of educating students to meet the demands of the modern practice of medicine. Its 17,000 plus graduate phys physicians have practiced in over 50 countries around the world. The opportunity for students to start studies in India, UK, and uh, many other countries 
are thing uh, are created by St George's University over to you Mr Charat thank you thank you very much uh, so hope you can see my screen at the moment and uh, hear my voice as well yes your screen is visible to me if the participants could write a yes as well quickly if you can tell us if the screen is visible yeah Great. yes it's visible yeah. thank you so much so uh, uh, so myself sharad as uh, i've got an introduction already uh, from um, the mindla team so let me go into the details of the university straight away so with regard to uh, the picture which you are seeing at the moment uh, yes uh, oh yes so uh, with regard to the picture you are seeing at the moment this is not a luxury resort nor uh, uh, high fi community housing this is our university uh, we are based out of uh, granada part of the caribbean islands but we are a us med school following us curriculum and uh, we are uh, the topmost university in terms of graduating doctors to the us uh, on average we graduate 1000 doctors every year to the us so that's where st george's university plays a major role in contributing to the medical industry or medical uh, you know fraternity on the whole so uh, as i said uh, from the 17000 doctors we have graduated 13000 doctors are practicing doctors in the us that's where st george's plays a major role you know we are competing with the top notch med schools in the united states so the first question i'll i'll begin the question uh, in terms of will i get a us residency most of you students or counselors or parents would be worried okay i'm getting into a, a university in the caribbean will i be getting into uh, can i get a us residency which is really hard we at st george's university are making sure that you know uh, students who are getting into st george's they are becoming doctors in the us that's the primary uh, criteria agenda of st george's university how we do it is through our strong support system and how we do things within the university so us us residency involves getting a us residency involves uh, united states licensing medical examination which is an examination to get into us there are three stages towards it uh, at a, at a undergraduate level at i would say at an um, md level so md and the difference between md and mbbs i'll be going through the latest slides but uh at, to attain a us residency you need to clear at least usmd step 1 and step 2 which you'll be going through your undergraduate year, years of practicing medicine in at st george's university so 91% 91% of the students who are non us nationals are getting us residencies and uh, mostly indian students are uh, studying in our university uh, i would say about 10% population from the 91 are internationals who are practicing in the us as doctors so this is the statistics which we have obtained in last year nine, 961 us residencies but this year even even better so we have uh, got close to 1075 doctors till date and we are still counting and uh, there, there are even more matches to be confirmed this this makes us the number one provider for us residencies for the last 11 years combined there's no other medical school in the world has done it so uh, we are the second largest physicians in terms of the us workforce as per the 2018 statistics but what i would highlight here is this particular uh, trend or uh, survey is taken every two years so this year due to the covid 19 has not been taken yet but once this is taken, we will be the number one. So this is the 2018 uh, survey uh, standings as of the universities are concerned. So we have uh, crossed the number by about 13,000 plus. We are at the moment. So this is through the Office of Career Guidance and Support and Development Strategies. So the next question which you will be having is, will I get a clinical, how, how will clinical network help in residency? So uh, there are a couple of changes in terms of the US medical system is concerned. So this year, uh, USMLE step one, which is uh, United States licensing medical examination step one, 
they made it as pass or fail. Uh, so until last year, it was based on marks, three-digit marks, which the student will be scoring. But this year, it has been made as a pass or fail. So clinical network, where you do the clinical network will really determine your residency. So St. George's University can be forefront on it in terms of deciding if you're going to be doing uh, your clinical network in a proper hospital and which obviously when you're joining St. George's, you are, uh, you know, moving around three to four hospitals in a two year span of time uh, for the last two years. I'll be explaining you the latest slides about the structure of the program, how the U.S. system works as well. So uh, coming into the residency part, we can we can we are, uh, you know, closely getting residency up to thousand doctors every year. That's where we stand out. And uh, we have 70 plus affiliated hospitals across three countries in the world. So we do also prepare the students for US Emily step one, step two, until you are with the university. And we have the highest success rate in terms of uh, the pass percentage. We have we are competing with the national average of US and Canadian med schools put together. And also the US orthopedic schools, which are, are uh, you know, uh, I would say direct competitors. Yeah, this is the main slide I would like to discuss. Hope uh, everyone can see the screen as well. And we're coming into the uh, the structure of the program itself. So uh, you can start your seven year program. So I'll be dividing into three stages. You can start your seven year MD program uh, if you have completed 10th grade. Say for example, a student is coming from an IGCSC syllabus and uh, they are having a percentage of 70 and above. I would say 80, it'll be most preferable. 70 and above would be considered, uh, depending upon uh, the performance of the student. So they can look into a seven-year program with us. So this is the this is the program which they can look into. And uh, coming on to the six-year or a five-year program, a student who has completed 12th grade, they can either go into a six-year MD start or a five-year MD start. The difference between a six-year and a five-year MD start is if a student is between 70 to 80 percentile scoring in 12th grade, they can get into a six year program. A student above 80 percentile, they can look into a five year program. So uh, this is the second entry point for a student. And the third entry point is for a student who has completed minimum of three years of bachelor's degree, which majorly covers biology as majors. I would say uh, BSc biomedical, bioscience, so what all uh, uh, you know fields it has been discussed earlier on uh, by our panelists. So those students who are studying any of the bachelor's degree, three years bachelor's degree can join. Even students who have completed BDS or MBBS in India or China, or Russia, Philippines, if they are uh, planning to change their career and get into US and practice medicine because US system is one of the best in terms of uh, uh, the ROI is concerned in uh, also in terms of the uh, living, in terms of uh, the, uh, the update, up-to-date research they are uh, conducting at the moment. So uh, that's the, those are the three entry points for a student. So what we we are unique in terms of the partnerships as well. So here you can see uh, UK flag and also the Grenada, Grenadian flag as well. Why we are mentioned here is you for for example a student, a 12th grade student. If they are going to be joining a six-year program, they can look into two options, which is Granada, they can start with, or UK. For a five-year start, they can either start with Granada or UK, or the third option of is available, which is not mentioned here, is India as well. We have a tie-up with MS Ramya Medical College in Bangalore, so students can also start with uh, the five-year MD program in India, which this year, uh, especially COVID-19, uh, situation this would be more likely for South Indian students or Indian students altogether so this this is how they progress on to the MD MD four year which is highlighted in orange here and last two years are the core years where they can practice medicine in USA or UK or Canada so that's what St George's differs from a lot of other med schools in the world and we bring in a lot of, a lot of difference as well for the students. So uh, hope uh, you have any questions, please uh, feel free to put it in the chat box. I'll be answering it for you uh, after uh, I complete the presentation. And uh, 
Um, I would like to run a small poll as well uh, in the meantime. Yes, uh, hope you see. Uh, hope you can see my screen. You'll have to, yeah. Yes. Okay. I can see uh, India topping poll with sixty-six percent at the moment. Right. That's. So you'll be having another ten seconds, uh, to uh, get in your results for the poll. While the students Great. are answering the poll, uh, I mean, uh, would you be happy to take a couple of questions? Sure, sure. Right. So one of the questions that uh, we would like to that that a number of students asked us was that how what is the highlight of the institution and how is it different from other colleges in the region? So uh, as I said in the presentation as well, uh, though we are in the Caribbean islands, we are competing with the US med schools. Right. And uh, anyone, you know, anyone in the Caribbean islands would accept to the fact that you know Saint George's University is the number one provider of doctors, or in terms of the facilities we have, and uh, we are regarded as one of the most beautiful campuses as well in terms of the medical uh, uh, campuses around the world is concerned. Um, I I believe uh, you have the video as well, which was taken by a YouTuber lately, uh, Nas Daily. Who came into our campus and has taken a video about uh, St. George's University? So, a couple of uh, good facts about Grenada, as uh, because it's it's part of the Caribbean islands. Grenada is one of the most safest places in the Caribbean islands, and uh, is mainly known for the tourism and also with regard to uh, it's known for its nutmeg production, which used to uh, make chocolates, and you get the finest chocolates, and it's pretty much uh, a tropical climate. What you uh, have it in maybe Bangalore or uh, in in uh, uh, most of the coolest places in India. So uh, uh, that's and our university is right down the beach. You know, students can uh, experience the serene environment. And uh, also with regard to Grenada as a country, is doesn't have an army. Now Grenada right. is one of the safest places, but it doesn't have an army at all. And uh, it has got one of the most uh, uh, few underwater museums as well where uh, students can really spend some time relax in a serene environment not a busy environment as london or new york or mumbai or delhi so uh, they are in an island where they can really focus on the medical education yeah. right so on that note uh, would you also particularly you mentioned that you have a number of collaborations for clinical training in the US, in uh, Grenada, in the UK. So what what kind of exposure do students get as a part of this training? So in terms of the training is concerned, why we, we made this uh, partnerships is to provide the multicultural or a multinational experience of studying medicine. Mostly you can find this these kind of uh, approach towards a business program. Uh, and obviously diseases as well have uh, you know, a common uh, it doesn't it doesn't know the, uh, if there is a, is a person is from india or usa or uk so especially with regard to covid-19 you know it, it started in wuhan and it's now it's all over the world so uh, we wanted to study these patients and diseases around the world and uh, especially when joining a program which is taking you to three different places especially india uk and us and grenada where you can really focus study learn the, the real time scenarios, what's happening in that particular country. That's the major uh, criteria of starting up the program of uh, different nationals, you know, right. in different countries. Yeah. Yes, I believe uh, I can see that uh, the, uh, the poll has ended at the moment. 64% uh, 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 are interested in pursuing in India. That's good news. You can look into our MS Ramaya program especially uh, when you are uh, planning to start your medicine and end up in US or UK or Canada.
uh, for people who have uh, voted for USA, 16%, and UK with 13%, and Canada with 5%. So you, uh, you all can look into uh, definitely St. George's would be an option for you if you are looking at uh, medical career. All right. Right. So and, with respect yeah. to that, yeah. on that note, uh, you mentioned that you follow a, uh, a U.S. curriculum, right? So a number of countries, including the U.S., require students to pursue a pre-medical course and then take up medicine. What is the procedure that you follow? If you could help us understand that a little better, Mr. Charak. Yes. So pre-medical is something uh, where the student has to uh, take up before joining a proper core MD program, which is Doctor of Medicine. So pre-medicine for students, as I said in the presentation in my last slide, where if you have completed three years of bachelor's degree, you're directly getting into core MD program, which we ensure as a medical school that you have enough knowledge about pre-medicine biology, uh, you have knowledge about uh, the, the core biology and uh, physics chemistry is the base of joining a med school, any med school. So we are looking at that particular biology developing as a student. We 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 would like what I would like to highlight is more than your mathematics, English and uh, your language course. It is better to enhance your biology and knowledge in biology, physics and chemistry. So that's where pre-med plays a major role. And uh, as we provide entry point uh, for a seven year MD program as well mm -hmm. for a 10th grade student, pre med is of three years for students who wants to uh, take away the option of studying 11th and 12th grade in India, they can join yeah. up, up, uh, a seven year MD program straight away. So, which is, uh, which is uh, an exciting factor for them. If you are focused a lot earlier to become a doctor, then uh, uh, you can uh, take up the program right right so swati um, uh, yes, have we yes, asked yes, all the yes. questions to the panelists great 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 uh so there um i, I just need to uh, ask a few questions from the attendees uh, so if i may uh, so uh, one of the uh, attendee has asked, what is the acceptance so rate? So in terms of the acceptance SPO? rate of international students or especially Indian students? If you're looking at Indian students, only, if you're looking at only uh, Indian, students, at Indian students, students, we have yeah. about six to ten percent of Indian students, but we don't have a limitation in terms of acceptance accepting students as long as a student has a proven track record of uh, merit of biology, physics, and chemistry and uh, with the required percentage what the university requires we can certainly look into the profile of the student um, so what plays a major role in terms of the entry would be the scholarship so scholarship is something where uh, the students has to apply right. earlier to get a scholarship even though we can provide um, mm -hmm. you know scholarship mm -hmm. students entry or uh, we can provide uh, uh, admission to students a number of students from india uh, so every year we have close to about uh, 50 to 60 students on average from India and numbers are increasing every year, especially MS Ramaya program is uh, is also added to the curriculum. We have been part of MS Ramaya for since 2015 and we'll be having more students as well who will be joining MS Ramaya this year. Right. So there's another question by Katyayani right, right. who has asked if students can join after BSc in India. Yes. If there's a BSc in biomedical or bioscience, they can look into a four-year MD program with us. Okay. Right, right, right. And I think the last question which we have uh, is basically, could you help us uh, throw light on a, a kind of a approximate fee structure? Um, so uh, as I said, uh, the fee structure and the scholarship goes together. And uh, right, also right. with regard to the cost with quality, we are not a cheaper university, the Eastern European universities, which are offering at a cheaper price. Uh, we are, uh, you know, equivalently expensive in terms of the Indian money is concerned. Our four year MD, the last four years would cost approximately about two crores, two CR. Right, right. And the pre med years right. differs. Pre med years differs in terms of where they're studying because they've got an option of studying in India or UK or mm -hmm. Granada. So, uh, right. If they are starting, for example, India for a first year, it will be 11 lakhs for the first year. Okay. And if it's in the UK, it will be around 25 lakhs. 
if it's in granada it will be 30 lakhs right 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 all right okay all right i think we are good with the questions we are done with that thank you so much sir for your insights and helping us understand um how to we can apply to st george's and um, now let's move on to our next panelist so um nilanjan ma'am um, so what i'll do is i'll just quickly play a video which she requested uh, me to play and then we can start off with the presentation hi vaishnavi can you hear me now thank yes you. yes we can hear you i'm just opening up the presentation so thank you do you have an interest in the living world do you ever marvel at the great diversity of living organisms and wonder how they have evolved would you like to understand how best to preserve this biological diversity or perhaps contribute to scientific discoveries that could lead to cures for disease trinity's four year biological and biomedical sciences program is for students who are interested in these areas in the first two years students focus on biological science while also taking foundational courses in physics chemistry and maths sharing classes with students in other science streams Specially designed modules also allow students to explore areas such as science education and communication and the history, philosophy and ethics of science. In years 3 and 4, students specialize in one of 11 disciplines, from the molecular such as biochemistry and genetics to the organismal such as botany, microbiology and zoology to environmental science. In year 4, students study advanced topics in their discipline and complete a research project which is supervised by scientists who are leaders in their field. A degree in one of these 11 disciplines can unlock doors to a diverse range of careers in academia, research, teaching, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, business, law and policy making. Thanks, Vishnu. Ah, uh, so, ma'am, uh, just quick. I think uh, we have one more video by Saint George's as well. So, we'll just quickly play that also, and then you can take over. So, just give us a minute. Right. So, Swati, um, can we play that video? One second. I'm just checking if we can play it. Uh, right. 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 I'll just share my screen and try. Yes. Is there be there some lag about the video? I think we can move on to the presentation and we can play it after that. Right, 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 right. So, Nilanjana, ma'am, uh, I'm just so uh, we can start off with your presentation. All right. Thanks, Vaishnavi and Swati. Hi, everyone. I'm Nilanjana Shin, Senior Recruitment Advisor for Trinity College Dublin, and today I'm here to talk to you about careers in biology. Science and how studying science at Trinity can add a unique edge and acceleration to your career path. Trinity is a research-intensive university at the heart of Dublin city, the capital of Ireland. But before telling you more about Trinity, I will provide a brief overview of what Ireland as a country and Dublin as a city offer to international students. Today, I'm going to explain briefly research in Trinity, science in Trinity, and then exciting developments in these two areas. Uh, Ma'am, um, if you could just be a little louder, there is um, sure. some, uh, yeah. So coming to Ireland, it's a small country, both in size and population, but one with a long tradition in education excellence, as well as in offering an innovative and creative culture. It is among the top 15 safest countries in the world and is hence a friendly and welcoming destination for international students. With Brexit, it is now the only English speaking country in the uh, EU and Ireland offers a one year stay back or job search visa for students who complete a bachelor degree at an Irish institution. This slide presents the economic climate in Ireland which is the fastest growing economy in Europe due to the presence of over 1200 leading global companies that have substantial operations in Ireland 
A majority of them have their European headquarters in Ireland. ICT, financial services, medical tech, and biopharma are the key sectors of Irish economy. But since today we are focusing on science-related careers, I will give you a quick peek about pharma and medical tech sectors. Presence of over 300 biotech, pharma, and biopharma companies make Ireland the top European country for international pharmaceutical investment. These include corporations like Johnson & Johnson, GlaxoSmithKline, Novartis, Abbott, Bayer, and many more. Ireland is also the producer of six out of top uh, six out of the 10 top selling drugs in the world. In addition to this, eight of the world's 10 largest medical device companies are also located in Ireland. And these include Europe's premier cluster of device companies such as Beckton Dickinson, Boston Scientific, Guidant, Medtronic, and Stryker. The sector employs over 29,000 people in Ireland and is the second largest employer of medtech professionals in Europe. Ireland is one of the largest exporter of medical products in Europe with annual exports of 12.6 billion euros and companies here directly export to over 100 countries worldwide. Majority of medical technology companies based in Ireland have direct uh, and dedicated R&D facilities, thus offering substantial employment opportunities for science graduates. Ireland is also the most entrepreneurial country in the world after the after the US. So there is a lot of support available in terms of funding and mentorship for all kinds of startups or spin offs. Moving now to Ireland's capital Dublin, which is a young, friendly cosmopolitan city like and like all other European capital cities, it is very well connected by various means of transport. But more importantly, it is one of the best student cities in the world offering a safe and stimulating experience as a UNESCO city of literature, while also being a global tech hub. Coming now to Trinity, which is one of the seven ancient universities of the world, along with Oxford and Cambridge, as well as four Scottish universities. These seven universities are ancient because they are all more than 400 years old. What this means for our students is that they are educated at an institution which has centuries of experience of designing education and delivering education. This is really what sets us apart from the other universities. Trinity is the oldest university in Ireland. We are a 16th century university with 21st century knowledge. The old and new is evident with our campus buildings as well, where the old library is a symbol of our legacy while the Science Gallery stands for our modern identity of a research-centered, world-leading institution. This slide gives you a snapshot of our campuses located in the Global Innovation Hub and surrounded by numerous corporate giants. I'm sure you can easily spot the unmistakable G, the A, and the F among the numerous other leading companies. Trinity has actively built on its tradition of academic excellence, and in our 428th year, we are ranked 108th in the world. We are also the only Irish university to be part of the prestigious LERU, that is the League of European Research Universities. Just some quick facts here. We are Ireland's top-ranked and most innovative university. We are also the most entrepreneurial university in Europe for the fifth consecutive year and we are ranked 92nd in the world for graduate employability. Trinity is the 17th most international university in the world according to the Times Higher Education World University Rankings 2020. We are a medium-sized university with a student body of over 18,000 students from 120 countries. Our researchers are constantly making new and exciting discoveries. These are often published in our Research Matters publication. Research that our academics are undertaking is very current. For example, last month, Trinity and AIB announced a collaboration project to establish a research center in the college to accelerate Trinity's immunology project tackling the COVID-19 pandemic. Over 2.4 million in funding has already been committed towards the project and is being led by Professor Kingston Mills. In Feb this year, colleagues in the School of Biochemistry and Immunology made an important discovery 
that could lead to more effective treatment for people living with multiple, uh, multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid uh, arthritis. Last year, a team of Trinity zoologists discovered two new species of birds in Indonesia. These are just some examples to tell you the, about the research intensiveness of the university, which is also the recipient of largest amount of research funding in Europe. So how research happens? Trinity has five major research institutes and also has research centers. I will show these on the next slide, which is this one. So um, here in particular, you can see that three of our five research institutes are related to biological and biomedical sciences. We also have a CRAN, which is a center for research on adaptive nanostructures and nano devices. And then we have Trinity College uh, Institute of Neurosciences, one for biomedical sciences and another for translational medicine institute. This slide tells you about the three SFI centers in which Trinity is a lead partner. These are ADAPT, CONNECT, and AMBER. SFI stands for Science Foundation Ireland. You can see here the large level of funding brought into these three cent these centers for research. In addition to working in research centers, Trinity works at a thematic level as well. The themes reflect topics of key concern for the university. There are currently 19 research themes, including many with a science aspect, five of which are represented by the images on this slide. Uh, these are nanoscience, neuroscience, smart and sustainable planet, immunology, inflammation and infection, genes and society. Trinity is uh, Ireland's leader in European Research Council, which is ERC performance. These are prestigious, large-scale personal grants that fund cutting-edge research across all academic fields. Trinity researchers have performed exceptionally in the ERC program, and Trinity has consistently been the top Irish university for grants secured. The League of European Research Universities, that is LERU, is a network of 23 leading research universities that are located in 12 European countries. LERU is a respected voice in the European higher education area and is committed to upholding sound conditions for research, especially basic research and teaching. Trinity has been a member of this prestigious network since February 2017 and contributes to its numerous working groups in a variety of ways. There is opportunity for Trinity to influence EU policy funding uh, for research areas such as Horizon 2020, Open Science, Open Innovation, and Erasmus. Two of our alums in science have won Nobel Prizes. In 1951, Ernest Walton won the Nobel Prize in Physics, and just five years ago, in 2015, Professor William Campbell won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Professor Campbell is the one who has launched our new science undergraduate programs in 2017. Thus, we are proud to say that our programs are the result of the vision of a Nobel laureate. So for students, parents, and those supporting students make their college decision, this is the image that sums up an undergraduate science journey at Trinity. Students can enter one of the science streams, biological and biomedical science, chemical sciences, geography and geosciences, or physical science. As they progress through their four years of study, their options and class structure changes. Typically, the first two years have larger class sizes. For example, biological and biomedical sciences have around 235 to 250 students who start every year. Some science streams have small starting classes. For example, physical sciences has 52 places. In the first two years, students focus on a number of core subjects that will be the foundations of their later specialization. There is also some flexibility for students to pick and choose science modules that interest them. Interesting modules have been developed for students in science, including science education and communication, as well as history, philosophy, and ethics of science. At the end of the second year, students will select what their specialization will be for years three and four. 
It is during the third and fourth year that the class sizes are much smaller. Some specializations have about between 15 to 35 places. The biological and biomedical science stream has the most amount of specializations, which are 11. And in third year, students have the option of taking an elective. I'll talk more about the electives in a few moments. During the summer months of third year is when many of our students would seek summer internships or placements in labs in Ireland or overseas. And in the fourth and final year, this is when students complete a large research component, which is a key requirement of their degree. I will also talk more about this in more detail in a minute. So um, laboratory and field work is a component of our science degrees, and these can be at the core of student learning. From first year, students are introduced to our labs and assigned a lab partner for each module. The labs are led by a professor and supported by demonstrators and lab technicians. Lab work also contributes to students' continued assessment. Some science modules have field work, for example, in geography and geoscience. Field work is undertaken around Ireland. Scotland, Greece, and Spain. For some specializations, there are optional modules which offer a trip to Kenya during the reading week. As mentioned earlier, in third year, students may have the option to take one or two elective modules. Usually, electives are taken outside the student's core discipline. For example, a genetic student might wish to take an elective in a language. There are currently 39 Trinity electives with more being developed. And here I have listed four of the science related electives. For example, vaccines, friend or foe is particularly topical in our current environment. This is a module for students who want to be informed about how vaccines work and why they don't always work, if they are safe and what are some of the key ethical issues about vaccines. Or uh, the other example would be decoding genetics, which takes students from the basic principles of genetics to the latest revolutionary advances in genomics and how uh, methods of genome sequencing and gene editing are transforming our understanding of biology, leading to advances in medicine, drug development, and forensic science. Coming to the capstone project, which I mentioned earlier, every student in Trinity will have the opportunity to do a capstone project or equivalent as part of their undergraduate program. Each year, students take 60 credits. The final capstone is a large component of these credits, usually 20, and it is an independent piece of research led by the student and supported by their supervisor, similar to a mini thesis. This opportunity leaves many students well placed to pursue a PhD directly after their undergraduate degree without the need for doing a master degree. Facilities, I think um, the presentation has not loaded uh, completely because I cannot see the information here on the slide. Vaishnavi? Uh, yeah, even I can't see. I don't know why this is happening. Uh... Even I can't see, I can just see facility. Yeah, because the content is not so there. So could you just share your screen and just open up the presentation in your uh, laptop? Let me just see if I can do that, yeah. Yep, I can see your screen. Can you see the presentation on the screen? Right. Uh, yes, now yes. You can, so I'll move to the... Yeah. Huh, so just move to the slide and just put, uh, I mean, switch on the slide share more. Uh, your, uh... Are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Okay, good. So I'll move to that slide, which we were here. Okay. So we were yeah. here on facilities. Right. Um, so could you uh, 
could you uh, like expand the screen and the slide show, yeah. i'll just do that yeah. yep is it fine yeah. right 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 go ahead all right so there are lots of facilities to support the study and research being undertaken by our students as well as the academics these include the zoological museum labs for chemistry and biology we have a hamilton library which is located at the east side of the campus and then we have the global room which is a dedicated resource for international students to bring any queries including questions like immigration or life in dublin the global room also offers advice for students finishing their studies who want to apply for the one or two year stay back visa which international students are eligible for when they finish their undergraduate or postgraduate degree in addition to research and learning going on at the higher levels within the university students are also involved in student led societies with over 121 societies there are lots of areas that students can be interested but here are some of our science related ones so we have a science society genetics geographical microbiological neuroscience society as well as a zoological society one exciting development in trinity i wish to share with you is the extremely ambitious e3 initiative in 2018 the head of trinity who's our provost announced the establishment of e3 that stands for engineering environment and emerging technologies it is a multi million euros initiative which is the first of its kind in the history of ireland and among the first internationally e3 aims to revolutionize education by integrating engineering technology and scientific expertise at scale in order to efficiently address some of the grand challenges that the world faces such as the covid pandemic that we are all dealing with now e3 provides a multidisciplinary approach by co-locating our schools of natural science engineering and computer science in state of the art facilities to prepare a new set of our graduates to lead the technology driven ecosystem of the future so state of the art world class learning facilities innovative research and industry collaborations are the key drivers of e3 we aim to increase students on our stem related programs by 59% which means adding up to 1800 students over the next 10 years there will be an e3 learning foundry which is a new building on the main campus in the heart of dublin built as a living lab with collaborative and active learning spaces digital media lab and research and innovation spaces our new facilities are due to be ready by 2021 so the cohort of engineering and science students that join us this year will be spending two years of their program at the new e3 learning foundry we are also developing new cutting edge ug and pg programs under the e3 initiative a second recent and exciting development is trinity's expanding partnership with columbia university new york in 2018 trinity launched a dual ba with our faculty of arts humanities and social sciences um, and columbia school of general studies this year it has expanded to include two science programs neuroscience from our biological and biomedical science stream as well as geoscience students will spend their first two years studying in trinity and their final two in columbia university new york and they get their degrees from both universities this year class will have approximately 45 students with 11 in the new science programs dual ba students benefit enormously from the outstanding academic and social environments at both institutions and in addition they are able to utilize facilities and supports from both institutions during their whole four years the program allows for student exposure to not only two different countries education systems but also to two leading university teaching learning and research styles so what do our graduates do where do they go here is a quick snapshot of what our science graduates do after they complete their degree approximately one third become professional scientists for example research in academia industry research organizations another one third use their science qualifications in other fields like teaching like medicine journalism um law agriculture or administration but there are also a few who move on to different directions from science while using the transferable skills that they acquired during their degree 
As mentioned earlier, Ireland is a home for 24 of the world's top 25 biotech and pharma companies and also has a range of medical devices companies based here, which offer a vast number of opportunities for our science graduates. These are our entry requirements. So if it is the CBSC, then we require 80% and we will need minimum of 75% in two science subjects. So it could be biology, chemistry, physics, and maths, any two out of these. For IB, um, we require uh, usually 33 IB points with two subjects, HL with a grade five, two science related subjects, and similarly for A levels. Um, we also need an English language test, which could be any one of these. For this year, we have, um, we are accepting Duolingo given the exceptional circumstances, but typically these are the three English language tests that we accept. We have one intake in September and the applications open on 1st October of the previous year. For medicine, we have an earlier closing date of 1st February. Our medicine program is only open to students who come from IB and A levels. We do not accept CBSC or any other curriculum for admission to our medicine program. In order to apply, uh, you go onto the website, you go onto the course page and at the bottom of the page, there is an apply link. You click on the link for non-EU students you complete the online form. Uh, you can upload the scan documents. We will be able to give conditional offers on the basis of predicted scores. And we also need a personal statement, two letters of recommendation, and an evidence of English language proficiency. There is an application fee of 55 euros as well. However, we will be able to give conditional offers without the English language proficiency as well as without the final results. These are the tuition fee for sciences. It is usually around 25 to 26,000 euros uh, annually. And then we have the living expenses, which come to roughly 13,000 euros per year. For the first year for new undergrad students, we guarantee accommodation in Trinity Halls of Residence, which are not physically on the campus, but slightly away. But these are gated communities which offer uh, 24 hour support, and they are located in the poshest location in Dublin. So ma'am, uh, you mentioned about the um, requirements, so there was no mention of any standardized test. So do students have to write any standardized exam? No, we do not require anything except the English proficiency exam. There is no other standardized test that is required. SATs or anything else is not required. All admissions are on the basis of class 12th results and the other okay. documents that I mentioned. Right, right. And, and you were talking about the different boards and the requirements. Uh, so one question I have is, um, would you want to have all the uh, sciences or um, any two sciences would also do if you could just uh, help yeah, us with any, that? Any two sciences would, would do, but it should be relevant. So for example, if a student is seeking biological and biomedical, then they, of course they should have biology, uh, but they could have any other science as a combination. For physical sciences, it would have to be physics, which would be core, but they could have any other science with it. So mathematics is not a requirement at all, right? No, it it would be one of those, but it could be a um, replacement for physics. So they could it could be considered in lieu of physics, but uh, maths yes. is not a mandatory requirement. Right, right. And and the entire procedure which you mentioned, is it also applicable for this year? Um, yes. Or we have any difference uh, with respect to COVID around? No, uh, usually our typical application deadlines are 30th of June every year. Right. Uh, okay. But this year, given the exceptional circumstances, we have uh, extended the deadline. So students have enough time because we are in any case looking at a staggered start. Um, mm -hmm. Our classes start in the first week of September, uh, typically. But this year we are looking at a slightly delayed start and hence the application deadlines have also been pushed by about a month. Right. And, and uh, is it mandatory uh, this year to submit the English score? No, for this year, uh, we are accepting Duolingo, which is a completely online test. Right, right, and right. The other uh, flexibility we are giving is that if a student has an IELTS result, which is older than two years, maybe three years, mm -hmm. we'll be accepting that because the, the situation at the moment is very critical and exceptional, as you know. Right, right, right. And um, so I have one more question. So uh, basically, uh, with respect to um, industry exposure and uh, placement after that, uh -huh. uh, 
So do you could you share that with us, like uh, with respect to how is the industry exposure uh, for students specifically in biological sciences? Yes. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, from year three onwards, there is a lab work that they do. We help them with internships, but there is also a possibility to do that right in year one. Um, we have a dedicated and an award-winning career services that conducts over 200 workshops across the year to support students with their career journey. And their services include assistance with writing cover letters, CV, developing interview skills, and finding internships as well. So whatever internships and jobs are available, including part-time jobs, they are listed um, by the career services. So we would as, uh, assist them with every kind of lab work as well as industry interface. And Trinity is also one of the few universities in the world which provides every student with a personal mentor across the four years of their journey at Trinity. And this mentor is a senior academic who is the go-to person for any academic or personal or professional advice that the student might need at any point. Um, other than that, I have already touched upon our academic facilities, student societies and global room facility, which is managed by our student ambassadors. So all of these are resources which help the students not just with their academics, but also finding their part time jobs, which could be related or not related, as well as finding field work and internships. And of course, because Trinity is a research intensive university, there are a lot of opportunities for uh, research assistance uh, assistance ships within the university as well. All right, all right. Yeah. So uh, could you just uh, briefly talk about the scholarships as well? So that I, I'm sure a lot of students would be um, interested in knowing because we have a lot of questions about fee structure as well. Sure. So if you could just briefly sum it up. Yeah. Yeah. So for scholarships, we have one, which is the Global Excellence Scholarship, which is a part a partial scholarship. And it is a one off scholarship, which is uh, awarded as an applic uh, as a fee waiver for the first year only. That is one. And once the students have joined us, we have a very unique scholarship called the Foundation Scholarship, which is as old as Trinity and hence the name. And when this scholarship was introduced, it was to encourage professorships. And that is why it has a unique structure, which we have not changed. Uh, for this scholarship, the students sit in uh, an exam in the second year, and that exam is basis the electives that they are studying. Um, if they are awarded the scholarship, then it leads to substantial fee reduction, um, a free accommodation and a three course meal in the grand dining hall. This starts from year three of their bachelor degree and it remains applicable for a period of five years. So it means that okay. it will continue across years three and four. If a student chooses to do a master or a PhD, this scholarship will continue to apply. And each year we award over 100 foundation scholarships. And more importantly, it is also highly prestigious and it confers a lifelong status in the college upon the students. Other than right. that, and uh, yeah. sorry, yeah, please go ahead. No, no. Uh, uh, so this is uh, the scholarship. And how about the fee structure? A lot of students are asking about that. Yes, the fee for our biological science program is 26,000 euros annually. And um, apart from that, I also wanted to uh, mention that biological and biomedical sciences and geosciences fall under the E3 initiative. And we have dedicated scholarships under the E3 for um, E3 scholarships, we have scholarships available for every year of the undergrad degree, and these would be from 4,000 to 5,000 euros every year are available. We have over 500,000 euros available in funds for the scholarships, and they are available for this year as well. So students who apply this year will also be eligible for the scholarships, and this applies only to biological and geosciences. Right, and right, right, right. They are all merit-based as well. All right, all right. I think uh, with the presentation, I've covered all the questions as well. And I did pick up a few questions from the attendees. Um, all right, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I for, also want uh, to touch briefly upon the, you know, the career paths that are available. And there are very diverse careers which are available, particularly in Ireland. So uh, one is that, you know, the skills are transferable and it depends on the specialization as well. But if I were to give an example for someone who would have graduated with, uh, from a, with the science degree at Trinity, then our recent graduates are employed at companies like Abbott, Ander Technology, Kerry Group, MSD, Novartis, and Pfizer. 
And many graduates also think that uh, it is only the pharmaceutical and chemical sector when they're considering careers in science in Ireland. While the pharmaceutical sector in Ireland is a very large employer, the science sector in Ireland is all, also includes a wide variety of other industries. So some of the areas that the graduates can look ahead to could be uh, food and drink, it could be manufacturing, which includes agrochemicals, it includes petrochemicals, toiletries, plastics, paints, polymers, environmental management, medical research, diagnostic companies, utilities, energy. The range and possibilities are huge after this degree. Depending on their specialization, some students also pursue research and development that you mentioned a while back. And or they could be doing lab work in a pharmaceutical company or a medical setting or graduates of zoology or environmental science, for example, may look for working in environmental protection agencies. So the current R&D activity in private industry in Ireland is focused on clean and green technologies, life sciences and pharmaceuticals. Additionally, there are opportunities available in quality assurance and control, regulatory affairs, clinical trials, medical writing and scientific publishing. Right, right, right. I think, uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we are good with the questions as well. We are done with all the questions. Uh, you can stop your screen share. Yes. All right, before we wind off, uh, I think Mr. Sharat wants to just show a video. So, um, uh, Swati, do we have the YouTube we link for that? We have the YouTube link for that, yes. Right, and we can quickly I... just try. Yes, I'll just do that. Also, there is one question from the students about are there any standardized exams that they need to take to, uh, to get admission into SGU? So, well, uh, with yeah. regard to getting, getting into SGU, uh, a student uh, has to take up IELDS alone as a standardized test. Um, so, even if the student hasn't got enough IELDS score, which is seven banders required to get into medical, then um, um, student can opt out for a EMP program, which is English for Medical Practice, which is an alternative towards uh, joining university, our university. So, uh, if they are not getting the required score in IELTS, they can opt out for the EMP program. Right. Okay. Okay. I'll just play right. the video. We'll just start. quickly play the video. Is it one second? Yeah, yeah. When I landed at SGU, the campus was beautiful. When I landed at SGU, sunny. the campus was beautiful. It was sunny, it was a nice breeze in the air, but everyone was welcoming. And that's what was, you know, truly important for that first opportunity for your family was out there. Where should you, uh, if you could mute yourself. So yeah. on campus, an SGU lifestyle, I think, is similar to going to school in the States, except you have this beautiful environment where you're really focused on medical education. Everyone is so focused on this goal of becoming a doctor. Having a good support system while you're in medical school with your friends is something that's really vital. It definitely showed me that SGU really wants you to be a family amongst your peers. So I think the school does a very good job of keeping the campus very student oriented. Everything that we would need or want is very close by or on campus. This is a comprehensive campus. We have 65 buildings. It looks like a U.S. campus. Our brand new dorm is spectacular. It has a view that would rival a resort hotel looking out over the beaches. We have our new exercise facility. And honestly, I started working out for the first time while in medical school because of that gym. They just had all up-to-date facilities and equipment. We have 24-hour-a-day restaurants. We have a variety of food and entertainment offerings. We create an incredibly safe and supportive environment on our campus. We actually run our own bus service. SU Command Center, Raquel speaking. There's an incredible security system over here. There's a control room where everything is marked from the weather off the coast of Africa to hundreds of cameras that take security into mind. We really cater 
to the unique needs of all of our students and try to make them at home and make the learning environment as pleasant as possible. So I'm in a handful of associations. They give you a lot more opportunities than just sitting in a classroom, and so that's why I wanted to get involved. When I found that there was an emergency medicine club here on campus, that was something that I was extremely interested in becoming a part of. Being a part of IEA, the Honor Society here on campus, I've gotten to know a lot of the, the past presidents, and they're extremely successful physicians now, and having those connections all over the world is going to set me up very well for applying for residency. These are the things that I do that makes me happy, and this is how I'm going to fill in my other gaps with this is what I need to do in order to be successful. And I think the balance is really the, the key here. One of the really exciting things about SGU is the diversity here on campus. There's so many students that are from all over the world. Not too many other schools have the type of diversity that St. George's has. You've got students from you know, multiple different countries. You learn about their backgrounds, their customs, their cultures. I think that is crucial you know, in terms of being able to take care of people down the road. You know, as a doctor, you don't see only people who look and talk like you. You see people from all different types of backgrounds. There's no other place where you would meet this many different types of people at, in one tiny school. I think it's been a good investment coming to St. George's. You can't put a price on experiences, and the experiences that I've had here have been phenomenal. I don't think that I would have been able to get the experience that I've gotten here at SU anywhere else. So to me, that is invaluable. You can't put a price tag on that. All right, uh, am I audible? Yeah. You are not. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sharad. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Nilanjana. Thank you, Swati, for a fantastic thank you, uh, on biological sciences. And I hope all the participants uh, gained a lot of knowledge about what biology is all about. And of course, to the two um, esteemed universities. So I think uh, we can wrap it up now. Uh, we will see you all um, with the next webinar soon. Uh, have a great weekend ahead. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.